In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. Time holes. These temporal safe holes located in the forests of Washington State are natural wells for quantum foam. Coming into contact with the foam causes one to experience all moments of one's life from birth to death simultaneously and with visceral clarity. Time holes are not deadly but where within the timeline of your existence you wake up is a matter of chance. This has been a public service announcement from the Ministry of Latent Places. I really enjoy this type of content. I've been running across it a lot on TikTok. And I think I'm going to continue playing some of these, but not all of them at once, of course. It's just going to be spread out throughout this episode of all the different ones that I've found so far. But I really enjoy this content. I know it's fake, and there's no such thing as time holes, but it's really a cool theory to think about. <laughs> stronger than Christ. <laughs> you are not stronger than Christ. You get over here now. Grab You are not strong. No, you are not stronger than Christ. No, you're not stronger. <laughs> you are not stronger than Christ. Uh, I know most of these clips were from a movie called Talk To Me, so it's not real, but some of it I'm not sure where that content came from because it's not from a movie that I've seen. I left this clip in here because I actually have a question about possession. Do you believe that demonic possession is real in this sense, like people actually can be manipulated spiritually like how they show on this clip? If so, leave a comment down below letting me know or if you've ever experienced this firsthand because I personally have not. I've heard about being possessed or stigmata, things like that. I just never known if it was real or not because I've never personally seen it and I've never seen actual articles of it happening. Almost every successful person that I have ever encountered has gone through not a month or a year, but many years of doing work without reward where they have to do things that other people find boring and they have to sacrifice things that everyone finds interesting that most people want to do during that entire season of their life. And they basically sacrifice a season of other things that they would prefer to do to do stuff that they would not prefer to do because of the one thing they want most. I'm personally a believer in just putting it all in and just doing the job and not ever expecting anything. And it's done well for me in the past. I can't say the same for everyone, but I seen a lot of people that really pushed 100% and did not get anything out of it in the shortcomings, but in the long term, it really benefited them. So I guess my main question is, is how do you guys feel about this type of work ethic or do you think that it's just not worth working a hundred percent because you're not being treated fairly or you just don't think that the work is worth it what if i told you area 51 is actually the gateway to the real world and we are all living inside area 51 without even knowing it this theory has been growing popularity in the conspiracy space due to shocking recent events nine months ago an intriguing message surfaced on a hidden online discussion board grasping my focus despite its subtle presence in the digital world. The reactions to this message were even more disconcerting, igniting a flurry of hypotheses. These assumptions implied that Area 51 wasn't merely a confidential military facility, but truly the curtain separating our assumed reality and the external realm. The hypotheses are as abundant as they are imaginative, and they all confront one vital question. What if our existence isn't as we believe it to be? For years, 
I plunged deeply into the complex realm of conspiracy narratives, examining the most recognized theories. I left this clip in here because I've never actually heard of this conspiracy before. It's a really interesting theory nonetheless. It's an interesting idea thinking that maybe Area 51, which I, I, I think this is blown way out of proportion, but it's a fun concept. You know, maybe there's a world underneath our world and we're just living in the experimental zone of the world. I, I think that's pretty crazy concept, but it's interesting nonetheless, and it could potentially be true. I'm not necessarily saying Area 51 is the place to enter that place or to be a part of it, but it could be this, uh, a factor of like what's in Antarctica. Maybe that's where you get into the secret society where the real Earth is, and we are still just in a test zone. It's pretty crazy. Stop teaching that the mark of the beast is a physical mark, because it's not. In order to figure out what the mark of the beast is, you have to figure out what the beast is. In order to figure out who the beast is, you have to figure out who the dragon is. Revelation 13, 4 says, And they worship the dragon that gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with him? So who is that dragon? Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. That dragon that gave power to the beast is Satan. Now who or what is that beast? Go to Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. Find out what the context of the entire chapter is. But there were false prophets also among the people. The beast is the false prophets, and I'm going to show you that. Same chapter, verse 12. But these as natural brute beasts. Now remember, verse 1 talks about false prophets. Verse 12. But these as natural brute beasts. Remember, Paul said, if after the manner of men I fought with beasts at Ephesus. And Paul wasn't going out hunting animals. He was contending for the faith in the synagogue. Same chapter, verse 14, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. For the sake of time, I'm trying to move pretty quick, so pay attention. Now remember, Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 says the great dragon was that old serpent called the devil. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1, now the serpent, the devil, was more subtle than any beast or other false prophet of the field. Wait, false prophets in the garden? Look at Ezekiel chapter 31, go down to verse 9. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him the last time that i seen a tree it didn't have emotions such as envy spiritually it is written spiritually it should be discerned now remember second peter chapter 2 verse 14 calls these natural brute beasts cursed children look at genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 it says and i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed the serpent seed and her seed the woman's seed now, this isn't the natural serpent seed that you hear all over the place that uh, the devil slept with Eve and bare Cain and all this. No, Cain was the son of Adam and Adam was the son of God. What these cursed children are, are children of the devil. Go to John chapter 8 and you're going to start at verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? This is Jesus speaking. Even because ye cannot hear my word, ye are of your father, the devil. The devil has children, spiritually, not physically, but spiritually. Those children, the children of the devil, are what's mentioned in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 12, talking about the natural brute beast, and again in verse 14, talking about the cursed children. So these natural brute beasts, the beast that's mentioned in Revelation chapter 13, is a false prophet. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, the beast whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. See, in order to be a worshiper of Satan, you do not have to fall down on your knees and worship Satan. You simply do not worship God. You simply serve yourself. You simply serve anything other than God. It's a false Christ, a false idol in your life that you worship instead of God. So the unsaved people, those who do not have their name written in the Lamb's book of life, are the ones that are worshiping the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns 
like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, we all know that it's Jesus who is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. But this says this beast had two horns like a lamb. And this is not the first time that Satan has mimicked God. Look at First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion. As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. What is Jesus? The lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, this second beast in verse 12, he says, he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and all them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now, who is that first beast? We just read it in Genesis 3 and 1. It says the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. He was the first false prophet, even from the time of Adam and Eve, when he says, you shall not surely die if you eat of this tree. He twisted the word of God and made them eat and to sin and by sin, death came into the world. That is what he wanted because now everybody that does not worship God is ultimately worshiping Satan. These false beasts, these false prophets are mimicking the work of God, just like the magicians did in Moses' time. Now, since they are mimicking God, they will show it by signs and wonders, and they will deceive, if it were possible, even the very elect. Now look at Second Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. These are false apostles coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ, preaching a false doctrine and deceiving you into thinking they are true apostles. Verse 14, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. These false Christ, these false apostles, these false deceitful workers of iniquity, they are mimicking the work of God and they have been from the beginning. Now, I have so much more on this, but I'm going to cut right to the point. What is the mark of the beast? Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, and he calls it, that's important, he calls it all. He doesn't give it to him, but he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. The beast isn't distributing this mark as much as it is he's convincing you to take the mark. Now, what is the beast? It's a false prophet. So what is the mark of the beast? Believing a lie and sinning because of it. It says in their right hand, because right hand represents power, your power. If the mark of the beast is in your right hand, then you have the power to do the unfruitful works of darkness. And it says in their forehead, because it's their filthy dreams, their lustful thoughts, their wicked nightmares, their idolatry, their sinfulness comes from the heart, from the mind. So it's in your forehead to do evil. It's in your mind to do evil. Jude verse 8 says filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Well, Matthew 15 and 11 says it's not that which goeth into the mouth that defileth a man, but that which cometh out, that is what defiles a man. So if that which cometh out defiles a man, and you are the temple of the living God, if any man uh, defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Then what you speak, these false doctrines, these false prophets, these false preachers speaking false doctrines are defiling their flesh and potentially anybody that hears them. Now think of what Jesus said to the Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for you can pass land and sea to make unto thyself one proselyte, and he is twofold more of a child of hell than when he first began. Did you know that there's a mark of God? Paul says, uh, from henceforth I will fear what no man can do to me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. The mark of the beast nor the mark of God are physical marks. The Bible says that you shall know them by their fruits. And actually, who is that talking about? It's talking about false prophets shall arise. It says you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? A good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. You know them by their fruits, whether or not they have the mark of God or the mark of the beast. Me personally, I really have always thought that if there was truly a mark of the beast, it would be money. Everyone, basically everyone in the world wants money. When the world used to work off of a trade system or labor system to have what you want. Now, of course, we live in a technological modern era where we have internet and cell phones, and that's not something you can necessarily work to obtain for free with your time, but it is something that requires money. Everything requires money, and that's why I think that the mark of the beast is genuinely, if it is a real thing, it's got to be money. 
leave a comment on what you guys believe would be truly the mark of a beast. Would you, do you think that it's money? Do you think that it's technology? What are your opinions on this? Because I'm really curious to know. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph here, you'll see that 16% of the viewers that watch my videos are actually subscribed, while a whopping 80% plus are not subscribed to my channel but keep coming back for more of my content. I don't think billionaires should exist. No one needs that much money. I think it's inhumane. Pick any city, walk around, you know, you see people starving, people without basic necessities. There's no excuse for that. And it's not because people are lazy or don't want to work. The billionaires that keep amassing more and more wealth so they can build rocket ships and do whatever the hell they want to do, that does nothing for humanity. Your critics say that's class warfare. <laughs> yeah, yeah, class warfare has been going on in this country for the last 40 years. The billionaire class has been taking everything and leaving the working class with nothing. So and you so, welcome it. You want so the al war. It's always, whenever working class people ever step up and say, this is wrong, we want it to stop, all of a sudden, oh, it's class warfare, it's the end of the world. I don't want to say that billionaires should not exist. I do believe that wealthy people should exist, especially if they've earned their wealth. But to be so, I don't want to say stingy, but maybe it's greed to, to not share that wealth more prosperously, it's kind of crazy to me. I know that there's probably rules and how things work when you are at that level of wealth. It just seems like it's a waste when they're doing different types of exploration, like when you are trying to go to Mars or building a giant clock inside of a mountain. There's just a lot of different things that money could be used for that would be so much better. And also another thing, a lot of rich people, they like to fudge their taxes and that hurts the economy as well. That makes things inflate just because you don't want to pay thirty, forty thousand dollars of your tax that you rightfully should be paying. You're, you're doing loopholes to not have to pay that tax. And then the state and the government suffers from it while everyone else is supposed to do their jobs and do taxes as normal. I really wish that there was a better system to handle billionaires on how they utilize their money. Once you reach a millionaire to billionaire status, there should be a little bit more of a give to keep your status at that level, and I really feel like it would work out in their favor if they were more like that. What do you guys think? Do you think that billionaires should share their wealth a little bit more willingly than what they do or do you think they're doing their job as is and they should just remain how they are and their wealth does not affect our economy discovered in 2001 an immense complex of structures near mount ararat turkey has puzzled scientists and enthusiasts alike spanning several miles these formations bear straight edges and hollowed sections suggesting post-formation human modification scientific consensus points to natural formations possibly used by a prehistoric civilization, as evidenced by areas seemingly sculpted by human hands. In contrast, conspiracy theorists claim they are man-made relics, fossilized remains of a fleet of arcs, a theory bolstered by their location near the biblical Mount Ararat. This site, now closed to the public, is a hotspot for archaeological study, surrounded by rumors of a cover-up and linked to the mysterious disappearance of several prominent archaeologists. Despite its notoriety and whispers of unnerving footage from an expedition, no credible evidence supports these claims. Man, I wish that this was a real video because that would be amazing. And it makes you wonder, you know, if they were to be able to, re if they could just remove all of the sand out of the deserts, what would they really find that we just had no clue was there? Peepers, reports of these disembodied ocular entities have increased in recent weeks. Peepers congregate almost exclusively in residential areas. If sighted in your neighborhood, promptly close all blinds and curtains. If encountering a peeper while outdoors, avoid direct eye contact at all costs. Effects of prolonged exposure are still being determined. This has been a public service announcement from the Ministry of Latent Places. Yeah, I actually have one of those peepers outside. They keep trying to come in my house from time to time.
I have a theory that the Mandela effect is used to see how much of history can be altered in front of our eyes. Here's a prime example of one of that. There is this woman on TikTok who was going crazy because she swore the Fruit of the Loom had a cornucopia logo. And to the point that even Fruit of the Loom themselves put a timeline of all their logos and it never had a cornucopia. And this woman went hard. A therapist told her, yo, you need to chill out. You need to just drop this. So she went through all of her old clothing and lo and behold, she found a shirt with the Fruit of the Loom with the cornucopia logo on. That shows me like, yo, I'm, I think the Mandela effect is an operation that's running around right now to see how much of history can be altered right in front of our eyes without us noticing. And then they gaslight the public and be like, nope, this never happened. Damn, I didn't think about it like that. Yeah, bro. People are thinking about it very little. Like, oh, it's the Berenstein Bears or the Berenstein Bears or Jiffy or Jiff's Peanut Butter. No, it's much larger than that, guy. They're using this to see, oh, if we can get people to forget certain primary things about their childhood, what can we do with history? I definitely do believe that there is slight altercations happening to our past to see if we're catching on. What more than likely was happening is there was probably mass errors made in production like the when they did the fruit of the loom who's to say that the designer didn't accidentally put a cornucopia in there thinking that it was supposed to be and they mass produced a lot of those clothings and then they're like oh well that's not supposed to be there so let's make more clothing and just say it never happened i, I have a feeling that happens and that has happened but i also think that they're trying to keep that history hidden from us because they want to see to see if the younger generation can be manipulated by historical events not happening at all it's a crazy conspiracy to really get down and think about but it's one that kind of makes sense what are your opinions on this kind of conspiracy do you think that maybe maybe it was just faulty production and they're just trying to cover their mistakes or do you think that they really are trying to basically gaslight us and make us seem like we're crazy but I do know the Fruit of the Loom logo had a cornucopia on the back of it, for sure. The fact that people aren't up in arms about them putting fluoride in your fucking drinking water is so crazy. It's so unnecessary. It it's brilliant on the other end, though. Oh, yeah. So what, what happened is the reason people have that um, relationship is they cleaned up the water the same time that they did that you <laughs> see what i'm saying yeah. so people at that time just remember the water not being that great and then all of a sudden the water is really great and it's got fluoride and it's good for your good for your teeth right despite the fact that there's direct correlations between high levels of fluoride in drinking water and low iqs they think it lowers people's iqs they think it's terrible for you. Fluoride's dangerous. Look, you're not supposed look, to swallow toothpaste. Look, whatever you're saying, people won't find out about that for a hundred years, and I'm not even gonna be a hundred. People and most of these decisions are made like that. Yeah. Well that most people are terribly unaware of the fluoride thing. I've definitely heard that fluoride is not good for you. But if you were to ask a doctor about that while it's being consumed through water, they're going to be like, oh, well, it's fine because it's in such small dosage. But me personally, I really believe that if it's bad for you, it's bad for you no matter the dosage. I mean, if you drink a gallon of fluoride contaminated water, it's going to be bad for you in the long run, you know? So I really wish that there was a way to get past that aside from having your own well and I'm not even sure if I believe that bottled water that says it's spring water is not being treated with fluoride. It, it's really scary out there, and I'm glad that I have my own well and I no longer have to drink out of city water because city water is just not good. So is nobody else going to notice that Easter is in March this year? Maybe it's just me. In my world, Easter used to fall on like the 14th or 15th or 16th of... April. And now it's just always been around March, the early stages of April to the late stages of March. And that kind of blows my mind because I've had plenty of times of church celebrations and everything on April 14th to the 16th specifically almost every year. 
So where it's coming from on March, I don't know. Am I the only one that's that's aware of this or is something going on here? Because this isn't right. Like the Ark of the Covenant ain't some spooky little story. It's what do you think like, it is? Think it's like a nuclear generator or something like that? What do you think it is? <clears throat> Whatever the nucleus is that would nuclearly power something <laughs> that would have initially been in the pyramids would also have been in the Ark of the Covenant, right. which would be the same thing. Right. It's something that you can't fuck with and right. it's radioactive and it's very powerful, That's why but it still has to be. It. Oh, shit. That's what Imagine. I'm saying. Nobody's telling any crazy stories, my man. Not globally. No. No. Every, everything. Well, it gets was less crazy something. every year. It gets less crazy every year. Yeah. 20 years ago, talking about any of this stuff was straight up nonsense. Yes. But now people are like, hold on. That's probably what disclosure actually looks like. It yeah. looks like a slow trickle integration into the zeitgeist to the point where it's just normal because a lot of times they're right i'm not a hundred percent familiar with what the ark of the covenant is if i'm not mistaken is it not a device that was supposed to hold the ten commandments or am i completely off on that because i feel like that's what it is let me look it up hold on okay so i did look it up and it is something that's supposed to be holding the ten commandments also it's supposed to be something that you're supposed to be able to communicate with Yahweh directly. That's pretty interesting. I'm glad I did a little bit of research on that. That makes you kind of wonder, you know, if the Ark of the Covenant really exists, who has it? Does the Vatican have it? Or does someone of higher power have it and they are actually able to speak to Yahweh with it? But what if it's a device to communicate to other entities that call themselves God and it's not really God and it's some other higher form of power beyond our knowledge? In the obscurity of space, an independent astronomer's lens captures a chilling scene, one that defies human understanding. A colossal, enigmatic craft looms against the fiery backdrop of the sun, a silhouette darker than the void around it. It's pulling streams of energy, channeling the sun's raw power in ways our science cannot fathom. Then, in an instant, it propels itself at hypersonic speeds, leaving a wake of cosmic questions. Could this be a vessel made from dark matter, that unfathomable substance that eludes our grasp? Might this be an alien life form, beyond our perception, harvesting stellar energy? The universe whispers of possibilities, and tonight, it screams a spine-tingling possibility. We are not alone, and the unknown is far more advanced and perhaps far more terrifying than we can ever imagine. If you also believe mankind is not alone, drop a comment with the UFO and sun emoji to prove you're a believer too. I've always found that footage extremely interesting because apparently scientists try to debunk it as a phenomenon of energy vortex or something like that. I'd have to go back and read the article. But to me, that is either a aircraft or a spacecraft consuming the energy from the sun or there is creatures that live in the astral sea that feed off of the sun, feed off of different elements of the, the earth and things like that from other planets, and they're just casually floating around. They might be invisible even, I don't know. But that to me, that was something that was a living or mechanical being, for sure. What is your thoughts? Or do you know if this is even a real video? I'm pretty sure it is. If you ever woke up yeah. at 3.15 a.m., okay, you might be cursed. Like, Why though? Legit. So, I don't know if you ever heard about the Amity House. No, no, no. This is a real haunted house. I believe in the States somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they like claim this house to be one of those houses that is truly attached to demons. Mm. Now, the story goes mm. that there was this man. They said a voice came to his head and told him to his three family members, his two daughters and his wife. Now, it's weird. And mm -hmm. still to this day, they have no evidence and no like, reasoning why the family members didn't wake up and didn't fight back. So what happened was the family members, they were lying down straight on their face like this, yeah. flat. And each one didn't move while he went ahead and every single one of them with a gun. Now, 
what happened was obviously he went to jail and he mm-hmm. did the question and shit. Yeah. But that house ended up going back on sale. Some family ended up moving in there. Mm-hmm. Now this family, they were haunted for years. Yeah, probably. For- I've heard of this house before. I've heard the story. I've even seen the movie. But in regards to the waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning or the 3.15 in the morning, that's that's relatable. Luckily for me, I don't have any voices in my head, but I'll definitely be waking up around that time for sure. I can't be the only one. Leave a comment down below letting me know if this is something that you can relate to and or if you have voices in your head. If so, you might need to seek some help. If you have crystals, crystals attract negative dark energy and hold on to it. So that's why we need to clear crystals. Take your crystals, put them outside on a full moon, and the powers of the moon are positive in terms of clearing the crystals. People have known that, the shamans have known that. This has come down to us from hundreds, if not thousands of years, because people have always been attracted to crystals, and crystals have always been around. It's not a new thing. You can run water over crystals. I like the idea of putting your crystals out in the sunlight. Let sunlight on your crystals Because remember, sunlight is the greatest disinfectant. You know, you got a moldy, a stuffy blanket or something. Put it out in the sun for a day or two. We've known that for thousands of years. Take sage and smudge your crystals. When they start a ceremony, they light up little sage and put the smoke all around them or have a person do that. Clears the energy. Sea salt, natural. We got a lot of sea salt, a lot of salty ocean. No shortage of that. It's natural, but... Put your crystals next to an OG, and the OG will clear it. Why? What is the job of an OG? To suck in negative energy? The crystal transmutes it, and out comes clean, balanced, positive energy. Now, I'm not saying I'm the only one, but if you have OGs, and you want to clear your crystals, put them overnight next to an OG. I really like this individual a lot. If anyone's ever curious about the Organite Pyramids, which I've talked about quite a bit and I've had a lot of people ask about them, I highly recommend checking this individual's videos out and his website. Now, the Organite Pyramids are kind of expensive. You're looking at anywhere from $100 to $500, depending on if you want it handcrafted or not. I do truly think that his designs and his products are pretty quality. I was talking to my wife earlier today. She was telling me that she's pretty certain that her Organite Pyramid is being very productive. At first when she got it, she was having bad dreams and I had to explain to her, you know, these harvest negative energy and she had it far away from her nightstand. I told her that these crystals, these Organite generators, harvest negative energy and turn it into positive energy so it's probably better to have this organite pyramid closer to the bed stand so that all of the negative energy that's being absorbed into it gets absorbed into it faster and you consume the positive energy faster because if you have it across the room all the negative energy is going to it and it's not having enough time to spread the positive energy. Sounds crazy, I know, and I'm, I'm not a huge fan of believing in crystals and stuff, but the more I utilize it, the more I actually do believe it. So I am becoming more of a believer in crystals and different gems and things like that. What is your take on organite generators, crystals? Do you believe that they have healing capabilities? Do you think that they're actually a product for positivity and can cleanse negative energy? Let me know in the comments. If you have not been able to catch the news with everything going on in Texas right now, I just got an update. So this article reads, the Texas wildfire becomes the largest in state history. Critical fire weather threatens. So the Smokehouse Creek fire in Texas and Hutchinson County increased to a staggering 1,078,000 acres and was just 15% contained as of Friday afternoon. This fire initially began as a fast moving grass fire on Tuesday and it exploded in size. It's now the largest in state history. They're saying that another 
Fire, the much smaller 687 Reamer Fire, has also spread into the footprint of the Smokehouse Creek Fire, effectively merging them. Governor of Texas Greg Abbott issued a disaster declaration for 60 different counties on February 27th. They're also saying that the warm, dry air combined with strong winds up to 50 miles per hour will yield extreme wildfire risk conditions across much of the Texas panhandle where the massive blaze is burning. This is an updated satellite view of one of the fires. You can obviously see how massive that is. This is what the fires are looking like at nighttime. This is obviously terrifying. The whole sky is red. And then this one's another satellite image. I do these updates every day, so make sure you add me so you can come back to me tomorrow. Hopes and prayers out to Texas on this one. That's got to be a horrible experience to go through. We've been having a lot of fires lately around the country, around the world, and it's really been affecting our air quality. But I do hope the best for the people in Texas because they're in direct consumption of it. People want to know this is a real image. This is not doctored except for the circles I made. And this is from the 1976 Viking One Orbiter mission, where they, which was the first photographs ever taken of the Mars surface. And that's why this is so important for people to understand. Because it represents the first time we got to see the surface of Mars before there was any doctoring or discussions behind whether or not they, had, they wanted to hide anything. We actually got to see the truth. And that's why we're, it's so important to understand why the 1976 images need to be the ones that are looked at the most. Let's go over why that's important. The 1976 image of the famous face on Mars is undoubtedly the reason why it, it launched it into kind of this big um, truth movement and, and some people call conspiracies, right? And so the face on Mars comes out and everyone is, is, is looking at the fact that it's got these striking shadows and very defined facial features with what looks like a helmet of, of some kind of a, maybe a past king. But it's, it's very interesting to look to, to me how clear the 1976 photos of that face are. And, and, look, and look at the shadows and how defined it is the majority of society that don't ask as many questions as they need to is when they saw these images, most people accepted them and they just moved on. It was like they turned a page and that was over yeah. for them. Whereas reality, if you analyze the night, again, the 1976 Viking one order images, you can see what you have there is nothing like what was captured in the later two shots. And so what happened, right? Well, some of the theories are, Either the images were doctored or this was destroyed yeah. by some kind of a some kind of a weapon mass. The 1976 images are so clear. They're they're some of the most high definition images we've ever received from Mars since all these expeditions began. Even the more current, more modern, up to date rovers that are capable of all this HD and all this video and everything else, we get these low resolution images to download from the NASA dark site. The 1976, we actually have a high 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 resolution i think that goes up to like a three or four uh, megabyte image which clearly shows exactly what we said pyramids a clear face what dr brandenburg found was signs of this signature that's left over that can only be left over from nuclear weapons and they only knew that because they've studied the scenarios with what happens on earth from it with mm. studying the soil and then looking what what occurs in the soil from that and he's finding these extremely high amounts of radioactive uranium, thorium, and potassium in the soil. And you look at all the evidence behind what happened in 1944, 1945 in, 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 on, our, on our Earth during World War II when, weapons, when nuclear weapons are going off. You see all of a sudden visitations and UFOs and, and all of these secret contracts and all these things because as a species on Earth, humanity had reached a certain stage. We yeah. had set off nuclear weapons. and on. On Mars, you, you, we see that signature, except we see that signature over a thousand times more powerful. This has always interested me. I remember seeing the face on Mars and wondering, what if they faked the face in the first place and they're just trying to cover it up just like the Fruit of the Loom thing? But I don't know. It could be a huge coincidence because... There's no other types of structures other than a few clusters of what looked to be like maybe mountains or pyramids. But if there was more information, more evidence of different faces and different pyramids other than those exact ones all the time, I would be more of a believer in it. But to me, that could have been doctored from the start. What's your thoughts on this one? 
Through identification, a genetic mutation of unknown origin is infecting female residents of a small Maryland town. Initial effects appear to be solely superficial, however local officials have confirmed reports of increased meridicide in the area. This has been a public service announcement from the Ministry of Latent Places. One of the reasons why I had to move from Maryland. I'm pretty sure that that was just a cluster of balloons. <laughs> Oh my dude, I wish I had a better camera. Do you have a good camera? Not really. Look at this, my camera sucks. Yeah, it's fuzzy. Yeah, unless I go far away. I try to stay still and uh, push on the parts that aren't uh, dark. Try to adjust to the light. Dude, that shit is fucking tripping me out. The phone doesn't even do it justice of what we're seeing. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, they're falling out of the sky. Look, that one's just sitting there. What the fuck? You still think that's a fucking flare? I do. Sitting there. It's not sitting there. They're, 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 they're coming down. Look at the very top. Yeah, I know. I see that. They keep coming, Dean. that. You still think that's a flare, bro? I'm still going with the flare on it. That's because you have no idea what it is. Well, that's the best I can This is not good. My hands are so cold. I mean, you see how it lights up everything. Shit, it's a trip. Look, look, look at the sky, it's glowing. Mm -hmm. That's fucking weird, huh? Yeah. To me, those did look like aircraft flares, but I'm not 100% sure what those could have been otherwise. If you have any information on what this could have been, leave a comment down below because honestly, if it wasn't aircraft flares, I'm clueless as to what it could have been. This weird image is from Arizona. Now look, I've never seen anything like this in my life before, and there's a few more pictures of this event. I have no idea what that even is. Let me show you a better view of that same situation. Look at this. There's like three rings of light, and the middle one appears to have some kind of beam going through it. I have no, I, I've never seen something like this before. I mean, seriously, ever in my life have I seen something like this before. Now there's another image that's a little more zoomed in, but I gotta say something. There's a lot of strange stuff going on in our world lately, and it's not all lens flares and CGI. It's just my opinion, but it seems like something is happening, and something may have changed. So when I see something like this, I start to wonder, where did I go? Did I leave my Earth? And join Bizarro Earth? Cause my Earth didn't have weird stuff like this popping up in the sky. Let me know if you know what this is or if you've ever just seen anything like it. Okay, Shabadoo Booskies, Shabadoo. This would have been really cool to see in video format because that, I have not a clue what that is. I can take some guesses, but they're really off the wall. To me, that could be UFOs 
that are invisible and there's just the right amount of light hitting them, making them reflect. I know that sounds far-fetched, but that's my only good guess that I have. If any of you have any idea what this is, let me know because genuinely, I'm clueless on this one. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. As always, if you are interested in any of these clips, the links will be down in the description below in the order that we watch the videos in. And with that being said, have a good day.